Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. We're so happy to have you here today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today, we are gonna talk all about primitive reflex integration in infancy. I have a lot to say on the topic. I know you do. <laughs> Now, if you are new here, we just want to say we do have a couple of other videos on primitive reflex integration, as well as podcast episodes. They will be linked in the description below. We also have a course. We do have um. a full course <laughs> as well. So we are just going to cover the tip of the iceberg today when it comes to infants and primitive reflex development. We're gonna skim the surface about what primitive reflexes are before we give you our favorite activities that you can do with your infants. Like Rachel said, we have a ton of other resources on primitive reflexes. So if you want a deep dive, go to the links below and you can. But for now, let's talk about what primitive reflexes are. Okay. Primitive reflexes are amazing. We are all born with primitive reflexes. They develop in utero. Each reflex develops at a different time in utero, depending on the specific reflex. The birthing process helps to kickstart the integration of some of those reflexes, which is why it's so important to look at birth history when we're identifying primitive reflex integration. But these reflexes are basically designed to be in the infant to help them survive within those first few months of life. Now what happens as the child grows and develops is these primitive reflexes will integrate, which means they will turn into more mature movement patterns. They don't necessarily go away, they integrate into the body to produce the opportunity for higher level skills to develop. The challenge that we see is when these reflexes don't integrate naturally, if they don't integrate completely, we see a lot of challenges with higher level learning, higher level cognitive processing skills, higher level movement and motor skill development. So we want these reflexes to integrate or go away or integrate into those higher level reflexes, for lack of a better term. But when they don't, we want to make sure that we are identifying why and we are intervening appropriately to help those reflexes integrate, whether they're on time, delayed, we just wanna make sure that we get those bad boys integrated. Yep. So a lot of our other resources that we have available are geared towards older children who have retained primitive reflexes where those reflexes are stuck and preventing higher level learning and movement patterns to develop. Today's video is specifically for infants who are still going through that integration process. And we're gonna give you ideas and activities for a couple of different primitive reflexes on things you can do with your infant to just help facilitate that integration to give them potentially a better chance of integrating naturally. So we are going to give you about one act. We say one activity for each reflex, but we're really bad about that. So it's probably going to be multiple activities to address with each reflex. Now, this isn't a specific integration protocol. These are not specific details. These are just functional activities for you to do with your infant, with your clients, with your nieces and nephews, your grandchildren, <laughs> wherever you are watching, and it fits with your situation. The first one we're going to talk about is for the Moro reflex. This is also known as the startle reflex. And the activity that you should try with your infant is playing on a therapy ball. This is like the big round exercise yoga ball. And what you're gonna do is have your infant lay on their stomach and do tummy time over the therapy ball. And then you're also going to turn them over and have them on their back on the therapy ball and you're just gonna do slow rocking movements forwards, backwards, side to side. And then once your infant is a little bit older and they can maintain good head control, you can place them on the therapy ball in a supported sitting position and do movements back and forth, do some slow controlled bouncing. And all of these different movements are providing a lot of vestibular and proprioceptive input. And this is going to help address the moral reflex. 
Now this moral reflex you'll often see when you are putting your infant down, maybe they'll startle with the sudden movements or the change in position. Now, if you think about it, we want them to go through these startles or through these patterns, these reflex patterns, because that's what helps to integrate them. If they are swaddled all the time and never have that opportunity to startle and have that reaction, that could be a potential challenge. Now, we're not saying that swaddling your baby causes these reflexes not to integrate. That's not what we're saying at all. We're saying everything in moderation, and we want them to have these startle reactions to help kick that reflex into that higher cognitive level. If you think about it, someone jumps out and scares me. I'm just, as an adult, I'm not not startling. We just have more of that adaptive response when we startle. It's more of an, a mature pattern when we do startle as an adult. So we want that startle from the you know motor movement of their arms and their legs flailing and potentially crying. We want that to integrate into a more proficient startle. The next reflex we're going to talk about is the TLR, which is the tonic labyrinthine reflex and the Landau. Landau? Mm -hmm. Landau, thank you. I, sometimes I say words wrong. <laughs> now the activity for these two reflexes is super, super simple, and it's just tummy time during the waking hours. So with your newborn infant, this is as simple as you laying down or laying in a reclined position and having your infant on your chest on their tummy and they're completing that tummy time in that position. And then as the child gets a little bit older and they're able to hold their head up a little bit better with more control, you're doing a lot of activities on the floor while they're laying on their tummy. You're propping up mirrors or books in front of them to look at. And it's just, it's very simple to address these two reflexes. At around five months, you'll see that Landau reflex. And we like to call this the swimming reflex. And families will say, my baby is swimming. Their arms and their legs are up in the air. And it seems very non-functional, dysfunctional position. Now you can help prop their elbows underneath them, but just have you just have to remember that it's normal and it's typical for them to go through that swimming pattern. When we don't see that, that can often be a sign that well, let's figure out why. Why aren't they swimming? Is that reflex, that postural reflex not developing as it should? So something to keep in mind, but we want them to have that swimming reflex. We want them to be in that position. Just know that you can help prop their elbows and place a toy in front of them to help functionally participate in like a play activity if they're getting frustrated. The next reflexes we're talking about are going to be the suck and the rooting reflex. And these reflexes are in and around the mouth. So the activity is going to provide input to their oral structures. This is gonna be stroking their cheeks with your fingers on the outside of their cheeks, as well as the inside of their cheeks and providing different textured toys for your infant to mouth once they start mouthing toys. We want our babies to explore items orally. It is normal, it is natural. We want them to put things, safe items in their mouth to explore. <laughs> because that's the first way that they're really exploring positions and spatial relations of these different objects. So if a child is not mouthing things, let's look at why, let's figure out that underlying reason as always. And I always love to say, get into the baby's mouth from the very beginning, from day one, put your finger in their cheeks, on their gums, on the outside of their cheeks, like Jessica mentioned, just so they learn to tolerate different feelings and different textures in their mouth. And you can also facilitate a suck as well. So if you're putting your finger in their mouth, on their tongue, stimulating that suck reflex is a fantastic way to help integrate these reflexes as they get older. Next up is the Palmer grasp reflex. And this one is often seen in infants when they grab your hair or your finger and it is the strongest grip you've ever seen. You can't believe that your baby is so strong. That is the Palmer grasp reflex. So the activity for this reflex is going to be once your infant is old enough and strong enough that they are pushing up onto their hands while they're in tummy time or into that pre crawling position on their hands and knees, you're just going to make sure that their hands are flat and open on the floor. If you notice that their fingers are curled, which is something that will happen as they begin these positions, all you're going to do is just 
gently and easily open up their fingers onto the floor so that their fingers are open, their palm is flat on the ground, and you wanna make sure that they keep that position anytime they are crawling or pushing up on their hands. Another activity, see, we can't just do one activity. Do one. It's multiple. <laughs> Another activity you can try is not really an activity, it's just setting up a sensory friendly environment by placing different textures on the floor for your baby to feel and explore and just have these different tactile mediums, these different sensations for them to explore with their hands. The next one is the ATNR or the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. And this is often seen as the fencer pose in a child. So when they look a certain direction, when they look to their left, their left arm, their left legs, they're going to extend or a dab. Is that a dab? It's a yes. dab. <laughs> and when they look to the right, if they're going to extend on the right and their left side will flex. So with the technical <laughs> terms out of the way, one thing we like to do for this reflex in infancy is working on some visual tracking. So having an item that is motivating, move it across their visual plane so they have to turn their head and track it and you will see that reflex kick in and we want to see that reflex. We want it to be happening and you can just do visual, simple tracking activities for babe to play during the day. Next is the STNR, the symmetrical tonic neck reflex. Now, this is one of the few reflexes that is actually not in utero. This reflex appears after an infant is about six months old, and this is their pre-crawling phase. So what you're gonna see is your infant is going to be getting up onto their hands and their knees, and they're gonna do that rocking movement, that forward and backward rocking. That's the STNR. So we want them to do that. And then we wanna provide as many opportunities for crawling as possible crawling through tunnels. Pop-up tunnels are great. If you don't have a pop-up tunnel, just make one with some chairs, some stools, and some blankets, and have your child crawl as much as possible. This is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why crawling as a milestone is so important. It's the child's first opportunity to interact with their vestibular, their proprioceptive, their visual systems. They are weight bearing through their arms and you'll see them almost do like a down dog or like a headstand position mm -hmm. as well, which is also the STNR. So you can be aware of that and know that when they are doing those positions, they're working on integrating and working through that STNR, which is so amazing to me <laughs> to watch them like, naturally just go through those mo those motions. But if they are not doing those activities, if they're not rocking back and forth in that quad position that on their hands and knees, if they're not doing the down dog, or if they're not sitting back on their legs and looking up, if we're not seeing those things, then let's figure out why. And you know, like we always say, OT in person, getting an occupational therapy evaluation is definitely the way to go if you are concerned about your infant's development. All right, the last one that we're gonna talk about is the spinal gallant reflex. And this one is seen when you provide tactile stimulation to an infant's back along their spine, and you're going to see movement through the trunk and the hips. And what we wanna do for this reflex is place your baby on their back, we call it supine, on their back, and have them do a lot of activities laying on their back. Obviously, we also want tummy time, so it's a good balance of doing both. And then we also love the activity of snow angels. Most people know what snow angels are, but we're gonna do snow angels just by laying on the floor and you're going to gently help your infant move their arms and their legs in the, this uh, snow angel movements to get that integration going with that reflex. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes this will require two people, two adults to do at the same time to really get that good quality of movement for the snow angel or the jumping jack position. And uh, it's a great one to do just as a, I don't know, just as like a warm up activity, maybe before you practice rolling with your infant. You can also work on bringing the opposite hand to the opposite toe. You can bring up left left arm, right leg together, and then switch. And so doing that crossing midline activity in supine as well. Supine position is very important for these babes as well as tummy time. It's just very important to strengthen both the flexor and extensor muscles. So that's why we like to have the child do both. And clearly they're needed for both of these reflexes. 
this. So those are our favorite activities for those primitive reflexes. There are a lot more primitive reflexes that we will see in infancy, but these are the ones that are addressed, are typically addressed in occupational therapy. Now, if you're concerned about your infant's development, if you're not seeing them hitting developmental milestones, definitely talk to your pediatrician to see what you wanna do next with that. But just remember that every child, every infant develops at their own pace. So as long as you are providing them with all all of these different sensory experiences, all of these different movement experiences, you're on the right track. Yep. When in doubt, put your baby on the floor. That is the number one recommendation we can give you to help integrate primitive reflexes as naturally as possible. We like to avoid like consistent use of like containers, sitters, standers, jumpers. Those types of devices will not help to integrate these reflexes. Mm -hmm. But again, remember everything in moderation. Things, it's, it's very challenging to be a mom or a dad and to get everything done with a screaming baby if they do not love being on the floor. So spend that time on the floor with them, connecting with them one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, three-on-one, however many adults, toddlers, older children are around and can be present with the baby on the floor. That is our number one piece of advice to help these babes integrate their reflexes. If you have questions, concerns, or comments, feel free to comment on this video. We'd love to, you know, answer any questions that you have. Make sure you check out all of the links below because we have a ton of resources like we've already mentioned. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram. We are at Harkala underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. And we share a ton of free information on both of those pages. We do have a lot of specific podcast episodes on each of these reflexes. We're going to link each one of those episodes those podcast episodes in the description below. So if you want to learn more about it, maybe potential reasons why these reflexes could be retained. We talk about that a lot in those podcast episodes. Definitely check those out in your spare time. And the podcast is All Things Sensory by Harkla. We're on all free podcast platforms. So go check us out there. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. We launch a new video every Tuesday. And go ahead and hit share and send this video to maybe an expecting parent, a grandparent who is going to be babysitting, maybe a daycare facility, a school. Send this video so they can learn all about those reflexes in infancy. Okay, I think that might be it. I think so. That's it. So then we will talk to you next week. Go to the link and just link below because there's all a ton of blah, 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 blah. That was great.